Hi everyone, we're going to have a look at monetary policy today. Now, monetary policy is another demand side policy. So whenever you're looking at government, or in this case you'll see it's not strictly government, but intervention to um, control aggregate demand or, or impact aggregate demand, we've got two strands. We've got fiscal policy, which I've done another video on, which is government-centred through spending and taxation. And we also have the second one, monetary policy, that we're going to have a look at in this video. So, um, what, are we, what are we concerned with, with monetary policy? Well, the first thing to be aware of is that monetary policy has a target of, of inflation. And up until 1997, the government controlled monetary policy. But in 1997, it was made that the Bank of England, that you can see up here, would be made... Um, independent of the government, although they are linked to the government, of course, but they were made independent and given the target of controlling inflation. One of the macroeconomic targets that we've spoken about, the objectives, is low and stable inflation. The target for inflation is 2%. Now, it's tolerated that the inflation rates are going to change and they will be slightly volatile. The target is 2%, plus or minus 1%. So, anywhere between 1% and 3% inflation, and the Bank of England are relatively happy, relatively happy. So how do they, how do they go about controlling inflation? Well, the Bank of England have got two strands, two things that they can use. So if you think fiscal policy, we had two things we could use, which was spending and taxation by the government. The Bank of England also have two ways which they can try and manipulate, affect an economy. And the two that you need to be aware of are the following. Firstly, interest rates. And secondly, quantitative easing, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, interest rates we've spoken about before. Why have we spoken about them? Because they directly affect aggregate demand. C, consumption. I, investment. Both directly affected by interest rates. The lower they are, the more likely we as consumers and firms are going to go out and invest and borrow money and, and buy. Um, the lower the interest rate, the less benefit from saving. So again, more incentive to go out there and spend our money. So where are the interest rates today? What would get, what, what might the Bank of England need to do to try and get us spending, given the position of the economy and the world as we are? Well, if you have a look here, pre-2008, interest rates are around about 4 to 6%. Um, Worth bearing in mind that going back in time to the 80s, interest rates were as high as 17%. But we were around about 6% in 2008. Once a global financial crisis hit, the Bank of England had to act. We had aggregate demand falling, we had inflation. We didn't quite get deflation, but we had falling. We've got to bear in mind that the monetary policy will also be targeted to use for other things. So we had really high unemployment. So what did the Bank of England do to try and help out the economy? Well, you can see here, we had this drop from 5%, staggered downwards, but down to 0.5%. So a, a really big 90% of uh, the interest rate was, was taken off al almost overnight. This has then sat at that level for quite a few years, and you'll know that the interest rates have changed recently, because of the, the situation we find ourselves in now. So with the global pandemic and all the things within it, we're currently at 0.1%. Well, that, that immediately gives us an evaluation point of, of interest rates. If you've gone from 6%-ish down to 0.1%, if you get any question that, that the answer could be decreasing interest rates, you can, of course, use that theory because the theory is correct. But the reality, if you're at 0.1, what actually can you do? There's very little. You, you've, you've used your resource. So what the, the Bank of England could do is use that other one. And the other one is quantitative easing. It sounds really tricky. And if you want to look at it in more depth, the, it is fiddly. You don't need to know about the government buying of bonds and so on. All you need to understand is that the government would increase the money supply, which pushes money into the system. Now, if you think about, for those of you who studied history, certainly economic history, in the, the after the war years, Germany and Austria printed money. Um, they physically printed money and inflation went 
went mad. It went wild. They had hyperinflation, where prices were doubling every few days. Now, we've got to be very careful with quantitative easing. In this day and age, money is put electronically into the system, but it is usually used as a last result, resort. Sorry, It's not something that's used regularly. However, it has been used in the last 10 years. Why? Because interest rates are already at record lows, and every time they're reduced, it becomes a new re record low. So let's have a look at our economy. I've put AD here, I've got Y0, I've got a big level of unemployment. And what we could do is if we, we can see that we could get the unemployment to go down by moving aggregate demand and not, not suffer too much. As long as we don't go all the way up here, we're not going to suffer too much inflation. So how could the Bank of England look to do it? Well, they could put interest rates up, interest rates up. Sorry, try again. I'm not going to restart the video. That is a, a, an error. Um, interest rates would be put down, sorry. Um, interest rates up is not a good idea. This is why uh, I don't work for the Bank of England. Uh, interest rates would be put down to encourage us to, to borrow more money and spend more money and encourage businesses to do likewise, um, which would result in aggregate demand increasing to AD1. They could also increase quantitative easing. So this, again, pushes money into the system, which should encourage banks to lend more, put their rates down a bit lower, um, and therefore we'll get more money into the system again. Both of these will go from Y0 to Y1. So we're seeing this growth, the economic growth, the output is growing. Unemployment, remember, is from YF to where you currently are. So the unemployment is falling, otherwise known as a negative output gap. That's also falling. So that works as long as that jump in price level does not represent a growth of more than two, certainly not a growth of more than three. If the economy is starting to move up here too far, then we'll get the alternative and we'll have the flip side, which is where interest rates would be put up and quantitative easing. It wouldn't be reduced, it just wouldn't be used at all. And that very much depends on, on the economy. And the Bank of England will, although they're in charge of inf inflation as their number one target, of course they look at all of the data and all of the uh, economic indicators before making their decisions. And when they do, then do you think, do you think we get a movement immediately? So one of the problems with, with use of, of um, monetary policy is that if we're using interest rates, there's not much we can do in terms of reducing them from where they currently are. Well, another one is, according to the Bank of England, the full effect of any manipulation onto the economy takes around two years. So if we've got a problem, we can't expect that it's, almost, it's not a, a button that you press on and off. Um, we've got to be very careful. Any change will take two years, up to two years, according to the Bank of England, to filter through. Well, this is the problem, isn't it? Um, what else might be an issue with, with this? Well, of course, if you're targeting one, one objective that the government is, is trying to achieve, as always, with any policy, we've got a conflict. So if we're having that increase in AD, we might get inflation that's going to creep up too high. Now, if you want unemployment to be the lowest or zero, well, actually, you'd need AD all the way up here, which is going to equate to huge inflation. So there is no way that we would be able to get there and achieve the 2% inflation target. If you were to redraw this with a classical LRAS, you'll see it even clearer because we, we still on that one, although we don't see the, the um, X output here with, with the unemployment, we do very clearly see this big jump in inflation. So what's the key messages of monetary policy? Be very careful. Monetary policy and fiscal policy are both demand side policies, but they are separate. They are two different um, uh, intervention methods. Monetary policy, Bank of England, interest rates, quantitative easing, and the current interest rate as of today is 0.1%.